So the focus right now is on PNB Housing Finance and Mr. Girish Koski is today in our studios to talk more about numbers. Pull up the last one year chart. It is important to note that uh, PNB Housing got completely re-rated ever since Mr. Koski has actually joined. It was uh, much lower actually. If you look at the longer term chart, more than double is what stock has and because the street is in love with its style of leadership from Canfin to PNB Housing now. Uh, but we'll come back and talk about numbers. Mr. Koski, thank you very much for dropping by in our studios today. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> Great. So, you know, housing finance is that part of uh, NBFE which the market likes. Other housing finance, MSME and other kinds are going through pr their own pressures right now. At least the housing part is uh, pretty okay. But you are also trying to steer the PNB's loan book uh, away from premium, which was having a large portion, more towards emerging and affordable. Uh, what is the reason behind it and why do you see that that restructuring of loan book is uh, important to take in the next one or two years? Uh, thanks for asking this question. If you look at PNB housing, let's say about two years back, mm. we had a lot of challenges. We had challenge on uh, capital raise, we had challenge on corporate book, we had challenge on asset quality both on corporate and retail. We also had, we also had challenge on the growth because of higher depletion of book. And therefore, we thought that you know, we should do following things. One, uh, we should uh, run down the corporate book, mm -hmm. which was about 18,000 crores. Now, if you see, it is now down to 1,800 crores, uh, almost 18,000 to 1,800. If you look at GNPA, let's say about two, three years back, it used to be about 33% in corporate. Today, it is zero. Oh, corporate wow. book is run, you know, we have, we have run down the book and GNPA is zero. Even on the retail side, GNPA was about 5.5% two years back. Hmm. Today, if you see retail, I think overall only is about 1.35%. So, this was not because of the origination quality. I think after COVID, the efficiency in collections dropped. So, in last uh, two years, we strengthened a collection architecture mm -hmm. and we tried to use legal tools. We were, we were able to collect better, recover better, use legal tools. So we did all of these things. We got growth back, which used to be flattish or negative. Now, last year, we grew at 14.1% on retail. Quarter one, if you see, the growth is 14.4%. Generally, if you look at any year, the weakest quarter is quarter one and the strongest quarter is quarter four. Quarter one, we have done well. We have done mm. well on growth. We grew retail book at 19%, overall book at 19.3%. In spite of corporate degrowing, uh, our margins are stable. Our PAD growth is 25 percent, our GNPA is down compared to quarter 4, it was 1.5 percent, now it is 1.35. So for us, quarter 1 was very good and the and quarter 2, 3 and 4 is going to be far better than quarter 1. So you've done 19 percent growth in Q1, you said. What could be the growth rate, let's say in Q3, Q, uh, Q2, Q3, Q4, with Q4 being the best? And which segment of your book is growing the fastest or you're comfortable growing it at a faster pace? So, 19% uh, growth was on disbursements, our book has grown by 14.4. Our guidance for this year is 17% uh, growth on book, hmm. on retail. Hmm. Okay. Corporate we are not doing currently, we will start in H2. The hmm. book is hmm. very small now, 1800 crores, we will start in H2 and even that will start gaining traction. But it's always going to be very small in the overall portfolio. Sure. Within <coughs> retail, we focus on three segments, hmm. prime, emerging, and affordable. Hmm. We want to grow our affordable book very, very fast. Hmm. For example, we started this book, uh, this business two years back hmm. and today the book is about almost 2,370 crores. So we want to take this book to 5,000 crores by this year end. So you are going to double in the next uh, nine months sure. itself, you are saying? Because uh, you are 2,300, you said 5,000. Yeah, last year the book was uh, 1,790. We will take it to 5,000 by this year end. So largely in the next one or two years, you will actually become a major retail player and within that how, uh, emerging and affordable with the largest segments of your business. True. How are the unit uh, economics over there in terms of NIMs, in terms of risk parameters as well? So if, if we look at uh, the ticket size for example, mm -hmm. uh, affordable is at 13 lakhs, emerging will be 25 lakhs and the prime will be 35 lakhs. If you look at uh, yields. Prime will be at 9.5, mm -hmm. emerging 10.5 and, and affordable eventually it will be at 13%. This year we plan to take it 12.6%. So if you look at the credit cost, if you talk about the risk, now on prime it is going to be about 18-19 bips, mm -hmm. on emerging it will be about 25 bips 
and on affordability it will be about 40 bips. I think blended credit cost is going to be about 35 to 40 bips, maybe 2-3 years from now. Our focus is largely on affordable and emerging. This year, incremental sourcing that is disbursements, we will do close to 40 percent of affordable and emerging business. So, we are reducing prime and prime. increasing affordable and then emerging. Mm. Because you talked about I think 1 lakh crore disbursements by FY27N, yeah. that would also be something which you will get the maximum push from affordable itself? So, if you talk about FI27, a retail book is going to be about 1 lakh crore. Mm. Out of 1 lakh crore, affordable we want to take it to 15,000 crores. 1.5. Mm. 1.5. One five. One Emerging 25,000 crores and the balance 60, 60 will be from prime and corporate will be about seven or 8,000. Okay. So, that is our plan for FI27. Right. Mm. So, roughly just to understand, next two, three years, the growth in your book value could be around 20 percent by all these measures put together. Is that a fair estimate in your view? Or yeah, could it, be higher? it should be about 15 to 18 percent. 15 to 18 percent is yeah. a more fair estimate. Yeah. Great. Because we are seeing a lot of uh, interest in the market as well regarding affordable and uh, emerging. We saw f recent IPOs coming in, some m and also actually happening. What, what, do you, what do you all mind uh, actually triggering this? Is there a long tailwind in affordable and emerging and you are also taking initiative to go more towards it. What is the reason behind See, it? See, if you look at the entire mortgage industry, mm. uh, companies focusing on affordable segment mm. and if you see the book, I am talking about what these companies have built mm. over a period of time is little over 1 lakh crore. And the, and the total mortgage book is you know, in excess of 28 lakh crore. So, which means on affordable, mm. there is huge opportunity mm. which is still untapped. Mm. You know, in last 10, 12 years, I think a lot of companies have figured out you know, how to make affordable business profitable. In fact, now it is very profitable. In fact, a lot of companies are now getting into affordable and emerging. Okay. Same thing is true with PNB housing also. I think the important po you know, point is budget announcement. Hmm. So, there is an investment of 10 lakh, 10 crore. lakh crore over 10 uh, years. Yes. And government allocation would be 2.2 lakh crore. We should see in last two terms, PMAY started in 2015. Yeah. It was there for 7 years. They had committed 2 lakh crore. Released amount was 1 lakh 65,000 crores. Mm -hmm. Out of that, PNB housing, we did loans worth 13,000 crores. Now, the announcement allocation is 2.2 lakh crore, mm. which means there are three benefits. One, the allocation for the housing finance companies is going to go up. Sure. Now, this will ensure that the cost will come down because this will come at a lower cost. Mm. That's number one. Number two, unlike the last two terms, this time the intensity of marketing efforts directly from the government is going to be that much more higher, higher. Hmm. which means this will propel growth. Hmm. So, this will get additional growth to all the housing finance companies. And the third, the margin this time on PMAY is expected to be far higher hmm. compared to the earlier two terms. So, all the companies where the margin today is let us say less than 4 percent, they tend to gain. Hmm. So, there are three benefits hmm. clearly and therefore, uh, PMAY is going to help all the housing finance companies provided they do focus to do this. For example, in our case, we have 303 branches. Hmm. All the branches we have geared up to handle PMAY loans. Yeah, and for you the benefit is also because you got the ratings upgrade, your cost also has come yeah. down in terms of funding. But talking about funding, uh, of late the measures that have been taken by the RBI has made funding a bit more tight and that is something we were discussing with the management of Chola as well earlier in the day, that the funding condition has become a bit tight. What is your situation because to give that 1 lakh crore detail deposit by FI27, you will need the funding. Are you planning some sort of fund raise or where do you expect it to come from? No, we have growth capital now. We raised, uh, we did rights issue Recently, last year. Yeah. Yeah. Our car is now 29.5 percent. Having said that, I think for us, you know, uh, uh, whatever is the source of funds has never been a challenge at all. In fact, if you look at our cost of borrowing, last quarter it was 7.98. This quarter it has come down to 7.92 on the portfolio. Hmm. Incremental, it was 7.93 and this quarter it has come down to 7.75. So, we have reduced the cost hmm. both incrementally as well as on the portfolio. So, we expect that going forward, one, we are restarting corporate. 
Number two, we are changing segments and moving more towards affordable and emerging, which will give us better margin. Number three, PMAY. This mm -hmm. will ensure mm -hmm. that you know, there is some leeway on the cost to come down and margins to improve. Okay, one last word. Apart from that plain vanilla product, loan product which you have, would you also have a scope for any kind of a fee-based income over and above? Uh, I think the only fee-based income other than the processing fee what we you know take mm -hmm. from customers for processing the loan is uh, insurance, insurance bundled yes, protect. I think yes. This is the common uh, thing. Other, nothing beyond these two. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Mr. Kaushik, thank you very much for dropping thank by you. today. Thank you. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.